Hello again, this is Mrs. Richardson. I am here today with part five of our SOL released question review. Today's first question is, what was one result of growing tobacco in Virginia? We have talked about several times that tobacco was very hard on the soil. It robbed the soil of the nutrients needed to produce good crops. And so therefore, every so many years, they had to rotate their crops or the land that they used so that the tobacco would not constantly drain the soil. However, because of this, it also caused many people to have to move further west to find better farmland and better opportunities. So, when we look at this question, we know that the answer is, it was hard on the soil, so many farmers looked for new farmland. The Virginia Company was granted the right to establish colonies by who? We know that the Virginia Company of London was a group of businessmen who got together because they wanted to start a colony in the New World. They felt like that if they could start a colony in the New World, that it would help them get more money. They knew that it would open new markets for trade and provide them with raw materials that they needed that they could no longer get in England. They also hoped that the settlers would be able to find gold and silver. But before the Virginia Company could start this colony, they had to get written permission from the King of England. This written permission was called a charter, and the charters granted them the right to establish colonies in North America and also promised any settlers who traveled to the New World that they would receive the same English rights as people that lived in England. And so therefore, we know that the answer to this question is the King of England. The King of England at this time was King James, and so therefore, when the settlers arrived in the New World, they named the river the James River, and they named their colony Jamestown, after the King of England. Many colonists and Parliament disagreed about what? We know that when we're talking about the colonists, we're talking about the people who went to Jamestown from England. And when we are talking about Parliament, we are talking about the government that they had in Great Britain. And so this is talking about what were the colonists and the Parliament disagreeing about. This was before the American Revolution. And so therefore, we know that the answer to this question is control of the government. Parliament thought it had the right to tax the colonies and to govern the colonies. And the colonists felt like that their local assemblies should have those rights. They did not feel like that Parliament should have that right because they had no representation in Parliament. And so therefore, they came up with the saying, no taxation without representation. This whole disagreement between Parliament and the colonists is what eventually led to the American Revolutionary War. Who wrote the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom? We know that this person was very important to Virginia because he wrote two very important documents. The first document being the Declaration of Independence, which described for the king why the people felt that they should be independent from Great Britain and shared the rights that they felt that they had, which was life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It also expressed the fact that they believed that the government should be controlled by the people instead of the king. The second document that this person wrote was the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, which said that all people should be free to worship as they pleased. This person who wrote these two most important documents was Thomas Jefferson. Which document first guaranteed freedom of the press in Virginia? Now, the important thing here is the words in Virginia, 
because the freedom of the press was actually expressed also in the Bill of Rights. But the Bill of Rights was for the United States of America. It was a federal document that guaranteed rights to people. But this document that we're talking about that gave freedom of the press was in Virginia. And so therefore, the correct document is the Virginia Declaration of Rights written by George Mason. Which sign is an example of integration? Now, boys and girls, we've talked about several of these words. Segregation means separation. Desegregation means to do away with segregation. Another word that we have talked about is the word discrimination. Discrimination means the difference in the treatment of people based on their race or their religion. Now this is another word that we have learned, which is integration. Integration means that everyone, no matter what their race or what their color or what their religion, everyone is welcome to come into a public facility, which is a building. And so a public facility that allowed everyone to come in is an example of this public library. The sign on this public library says everyone is welcome. This is a sign that integration has taken place here. It wasn't a library just for whites or just for blacks or just for Mexicans. This is a public library that everyone is welcome to come into. One of the roles of the judicial branch of Virginia state government is to. Now we've talked about the three branches of government, legislative, executive, and judicial. We know that legislative branch means lawmaking. We also know that the executive branch is for the top office, of the man in charge, man or woman in charge of the state. In this case, it would be the governor. And then the judicial branch is made up of judges and courts. We know that judges make decisions. They decide about the guilt or innocence of a person. They also decide if the state constitution is being followed when new laws are made. In other words, are these laws constitutional or unconstitutional? So therefore, we know that in the judicial branch of government, that the courts or judges decide court cases. Who is the leader of the executive branch of Virginia's government? As we just talked about, there are three branches, the legislative branch, executive branch and judicial branch. The legislative branch is lawmaking and would be made up of these representatives and these senators. The judicial branch is made up of judges and so if you look here the chief justice would be the judicial branch. The executive branch is the branch of government that makes sure that laws are being carried out. And the person that is in charge of the executive branch is the governor. The governor of the state makes sure that all laws are carried out. What was most important to the economy of colonial Virginia? Now, once again, we have to look at our key words. And in this case, colonial Virginia is the key word. This is where you needed to stop and think about the fact that at this time, most of the people in this area was farming. They were farming because that's what it took to survive. They were growing crops that could be eaten, as well as crops such as tobacco that could be sold for money or for trade and barter and those types of things. And so at this time in colonial Virginia, the most important thing to the economy was agriculture. We have learned that agriculture is a large word for farming. 
There was very little paper money or coins in the early Virginia colony. So storekeepers during this time mainly received payment by. We need to look at these answer choices. A says offering to share goods with the settlers. Now what I find interesting here is the word to share. This would imply that the storekeepers were just giving supplies to the settlers. Now we know that the storekeepers were not able to do this because they would then go out of business if they never received any type of payment for their goods. So A would definitely be checked off as a slash the trash. B, accepting checks from English banks. Boys and girls, the English banks were not going to pay the storekeepers for things that the settlers racked up payments for. They were just not going to do that. I'm not even sure that there were checks available during the colonial period. C, offering credit to the settlers for goods. Now we have learned that credit means to buy something now and pay for it later. And so this would make sense because what this means is that the settlers would get their goods that they needed from the storekeepers, such as flour and sugar and salt and things such as these. And then when they got their payment for their crops, then they would go and pay the storekeeper back. That would be credit, buy something now, pay for it later. Let's look at D, accepting gold from English ships. I don't believe the English ships really had any gold because they had sent the settlers here looking for gold. So why would they already have gold? So therefore, we know that the answer to this question is offering credit to the settlers for goods. The last question on this set today is going to be which factor caused the changes shown in this graph? If you look at this graph, it says Virginia's urban population. Here's the percentage of the population and here's the years at the bottom. I think if you pay close attention, you will see that the urban or city population has grown dramatically since 1940 up to the year 2000. It has been at a steady increase where more and more and more people moved to the cities. So the question is, what caused this to happen? Why would people move to the city or the urban areas? And the answer to that question is more jobs. People moved to the cities to get more and better jobs so that they could make more money. Thank you for your time. I hope that you've learned many things during this lesson. Please continue to study and listen to these screencasts as you prepare for the SOL test. Have a great day.